Hello, welcome to Curiosity, the science show presented by Young Academy of India. And this is the episode number 26, the December episode. So let's see what is, uh, uh, what all we learned, I learned in the last month, you know. So November has been a very interesting month, right? And in December, what to look for? What are the opportunities for the young researchers and students? And also what are the events, right? Uh, all the observances, that is what uh, we will actually cover in this episode. And uh, yes, this is the month, the December, I'm looking forward to a major event called Solstice, you know, the midwinter, isn't it? The first uh, day of the winter, according to Astronomical Almanac. So, uh, yes, yeah, so we will see that. And in the last month, uh, we have seen in November episode, the Nobel Prize winners, isn't it? Uh, if you haven't, please check it out, the November episode. Now, the, the December, we have seen in November last month, Ig Nobel Prizes. So many people confuse the Ig Nobel is like anti Nobel. You know, so Nobel Prize is for the really first class research, while Ig Nobel is like, you know, very bad research. No, it's nothing like that. Ig Nobel is the spirit is like, uh, it, it uh, makes you laugh at first, you know, and then it makes you to think deeper. There is a spirit of the Ig Nobel. And these are actually the, the, the ceremonies in Howard and it is uh, attended by many real Nobel Prize winners, you know, and many real Nobel Prize winners have won Ig Nobel Prize as well. So don't take it so serious. There are so many fun to experience in science. That is the spirit of Ig Nobel, you know. So now uh, last month we have seen Ig Nobel Prizes have been announced. Biology prizes gone for uh, a team from Sweden. Uh, this is for the cat human communication. Meowing, mourning, squeaking, murmuring, tweedling, trilling, chattering, chirping. So, so many interesting things, right? So, uh, it is something like linguistics of the cat communication, you know? Very exciting. Please check it out. The papers and very high prestigious journals, they, they published some papers. Ecology Prize went for, you know, when we discard the chewing gums, uh, in the in the in the city, which is very bad, you know, the discarding on the street is really bad, isn't it? But still, many people do across uh, the countries. So these researchers from Spain and Iran, they picked up this uh, discarded chewing gum and they analyzed the microbial co uh, community structure, the microbiome structure of this uh, chewing gum. Very interesting. That is something like our fingerprint. You know, our own personal microbiome is uh, is highly intertwined to the personal identity, you know. And now chemistry, it's again, it's across, the, uh, you know, across the countries like Germany, UK, New Zealand. It's a big team, right? And uh, for analyzing uh, the, the air inside the movie theater, you know, uh, it's something like I can smell fear in the air, isn't it? Or is it funny movie or is it, you know, uh, is it something like... Um, a sexually explicit movie, romance movie, does it have special smell? So if you analyze the air inside the movie theater, the so-called volatile organic carbon, and does it give cues uh, and clues about the kind of movie? So is, it, is there any association with the movie genre and the kind of volatile organic carbon? Very exciting, isn't it? I like this Ig Nobel Prize a lot because it is curiosity driven, just like uh, the, the, the show, the, it's called Curiosity, isn't it? The science show, just like that. This Ig Nobel Prize is really inside our curiosity, the child-like uh, curiosity, you know? Economics Prize goes for, uh, you know, uh, again, an international team from France, Switzerland, Australia, uh, Austria and Czech Republic and UK, that their work is very interesting. Uh, you know, this is about obesity of countries, politicians, may be an indicator of the country's corruption. <laughs> so those countries with high prevalent of obese politician, that means that those countries are rampant in correct corruption, you know, very uh, interesting. Corruption, by the way, we have a International Day of Corruption coming in this month. We will come to in a short while. Medicine, Ig Nobel went for, again, an international team from Germany, Turkey, and UK. Uh, this is for uh, demonstrating that the sexual orgasms can be effective as decongestant medicine for improving the nasal breathing <laughs> to improve the nasal breathing the orgasm might uh, give a uh, you know that could be a, a low cost solution or no cost solution isn't it very interesting isn't it peace price goes for uh, a team from the u.s uh, for testing the hypothesis that the humans evolved bears to protect from punches on the face so it's a peace price it's a fantastic isn't it it's very interesting to protect from the punch on the face that humans started developing the uh, the beard <laughs> you know 
like mustache and beard. Very interesting, isn't it? Now, the physics Nobel went for a team from Netherlands, Italy, Taiwan, and the US uh, for conducting the experiments to learn why pedestrians do not constantly collide with other pedestrians, even though it's seemingly chaotic, right? The, the way that we walk, we don't collide with each other. So how it happens? So that is what the, the physics ignoble is for. Now, kinetics price goes for, uh, again, an international team, just the opposite, you know, the Japan, Switzerland, Italy. Uh, it's about like, learn why pedestrians do sometimes collide with each other. You know, so that also happens. So why that happens? So it's like kinetics and physics are complementing to each other. Coming to entomology price, entomology for the new method of the cockroach control on submarines. I never knew that the submarines have cockroaches. You know, so that is what uh, you know. So that it, that is what it says. So uh, you know, the the submarine cockroach problem infestation. How to control it? Then comes the transportation Nobel. Uh, Ig Nobel went for Namibia, South Africa, Tanzania, Zimbabwe, Brazil, UK, and US. Namibia is coming again in the later part of this show that it's visible that the, the uh, total solar eclipse is coming in this month. It's visible in Namibia, you know, as well as in uh, Antarctica. So, what is this transportation Nobel for? So, it is for determining an experiment. Uh, you know, safer to transport an airborne rhinoceros upside down. How do you transport rhinoceros from one country to another in plane? So is it safe to transport in the normal way? Or should we transport in upside down? It looks like upside down is a better option to transport rhinoceros. As well as uh, maybe the same thing can be applied for elephants, also large body sized, uh, you know, uh, animals. So to, to uh, decrease the chance of injury that is the spirit of these discoveries isn't it now coming to the discovery part of the last month pregnant women in the united states die homicide uh, that is murder more than the die of the pregnancy related causes that is really really bad you know so the pregnancy related uh, death is now decreased a, a lot because of uh, uh, you know improvements in medicine but homicide that is uh, you know that is basically the murder is really a prevalent cause of now that so that actually makes me think that murder has been the case with uh, a, a, any, any time of the human history isn't it now i think it is getting better but then that that makes me think about how great the med the progress in medicine has been isn't it second story is the taxes on the sugary drinks only reduce the consumption if the price tax mention the tax so it should mention this much is the tax that you are paying. Then uh, people actually start reducing. So if the tax is not mentioned, so subconsciously we think that why why, why should we pay around 300 percentage tax uh, back to the government to buy this one, isn't it? So then we subconsciously we tend to uh, not to take those kind of drinks, you know. So the tax information on the drinks are really important. Then mask wearing cuts COVID incidence by 53%. That is what a meta-analysis of 30 other studies around the world. Uh, that is what, you know, 53 reduction in the mask wearing. I, I think this is very important right now. Even if you have two shots of the COVID vaccine, you should still uh, wear mask uh, more than ever because of the, you know, the new variant has come up in the last month, isn't it? Omicron. So Omicron. Uh, is basically it is a GR slash 484A that is what the, the mutation uh, you know that is what the, the mutant uh, sci scientifically called so common commonly known as Omicron you know so by the way the, the story if you look uh, Nu and Xi were the, the green, Greek alphabets but then we avoided because it, it kind of like confused with new and C is a common name in the in the China, you know. So that is why the WHO thought it's Omicron. So Omicron is very interesting. It's deadly with 32 mutations. Of course, mutations naturally occurring, you know. You know? So this uh, wire, coronavirus kind of two to three mutations per month. That is a mutation frequency. So this has got 32 mutations. And almost uh, everything is on uh, the spike domain, you know, the protruding domain of the uh, SARS-CoV-2. And uh, almost half of that on the receptor binding domain of the spike protein, RBD. So this one is really uh, kind of dangerous. And many virologists say that, uh, you know, that uh, currently available vaccines cannot neutralize this variant. So we really need to take precautions, friends.
uh, you know, mask mandate and social distancing. The physical distancing is only way through. Lack of sleep affects the empathy. That is, uh, you know, empathy means feeling good for others, isn't it? Uh, being concerned uh, and conscientious for others. So, especially for the healthcare workers, that is, uh, you know, that is really important uh, to have a good night's sleep then, to, to have your emotional well-being. Fifth story is about the mouse study shows microplastics can infiltrate blood-brain barrier. It can get into our brain. Uh, that is really scary, isn't it? Next story. 18% of the US population think COVID vaccinations are more dangerous than the virus itself. I still get a lot of hate mail for some of the papers which I wrote. Uh, you know, some uh, op-ed column, one of the, the things which I criticize the Luke Montagnier in The Wire. I still got a, a very angry email that look at now the because of the vaccine that Omicron is in. So see, this kind of uh, fake news is everywhere, friends. And people hardly, you know, hardcore believers of this fake news and they will never change their belief in light of new evidence. You know, a cognitive dissonance. That is a name in psychology for that phenomenon. So both moderate and strenuous exercise alleviate the symptoms of anxiety and even when the disorder is chronic. So exercise uh, can be a good stress buster. That is what the latest study says. And coming next is sex education through Netflix. So they have a, a very interesting series called Sex Education. So it's doing better sex education than most of the schools. That is what this study says. So that means that uh, for sex education, uh, you know, this kind of... Uh, um, uh, non-formal or informal education has a huge, uh, you know, huge uh, role to play. That is what this new uh, research says. Nine stories, the new research with uh, uh, N is 95. So 95 individuals participate in the study that shows that when people exercise with a romantic partner compared to when exercising alone, they're more likely to experience positive emotions during exercise and during the day and also experience more relationship Satisfaction is good for your relationship and it's also good for your exercise. So both way it is good to exercise uh, with your romantic partner. Very interesting, isn't it? And another thing which I came across last, last month is uh, through Naked Scientist podcast is that heartbeat sinks in successful romantic rendezvous. If you're going on a date and if you like each other, then the heart rate keeps sinking, you know? So again, that is a, that's a very good crowd management tactic like in airport and uh, you know in uh, railway stations they play uh, the you know the uh, music with kind of similar beats per minute bpm so that our heart rate and everybody else's heart rate kind of syncs with that kind of music played in background uh, music in such crowd system so that people kind of walk in not too fast or not too slow at this right uh, you know, right uh, uh, velocity, uh, uh, speed. That's an excellent <laughs> tactic, isn't it? So, 10 stories. A scientist found repeatedly listening to a personally meaningful music induced plasticity, the neural plasticity. That means the uh, formation of new, new neurons, that is neurogenesis as well, you know, and improved the cognitive function of patients with mild cognitive impairment, impairment as well as in early stage Alzheimer's disease. So, Listening to some of your favorite songs again and again uh, could be good for your mental well-being. You know, especially neuronal evidences suggest that. Uh, 11th study is about silk modified to reflect more sunlight that keeps the skin 12.5 degrees cooler than cotton. Very good for people like us living in tropical countries like here in India. Uh, you know, in summer it's really hot and silk if the genetical engineered silk that can reflect the sun a lot i think that's a very interesting way so as linen cotton is the worst of winter isn't it cotton though it is kind of comfortable indoors but outdoor uh, you know so it's it's a it's, it absorbs all the sweat and it doesn't actually release you know so it that is why the in humid season i never like wearing cotton outdoors so linen is good of course but it you know the wrinkle is uh, the problem isn't it uh, and the twelfth study is a new study shows that the people who believe in astrology tend to be more narcissistic and less intelligent than uh, those who do not believe. Researchers suggest that the link may be due to the self-focused perspective 
at the core of both astrology and narcissism both of these two things have got something in common that both of these are a self-focused perspective and that is why there is an association between these two uh, that's very alarming and that's something to be concerned about isn't it 13th story is that the gay and bisexual men who move from the country with high stigma that is highly conservative nations uh, for this lgbtq uh, to the one which is more accepting uh, for example the western europe is a lot more accepting for lgbtq uh, they experience significantly lower risk of suicide and depression you know so being accommodative of differences of opinion is the key very interesting study i really like this study 14th study is that a new large-scale study with accurate sodium measurements from individuals strengthens the link between sodium intake and cardiovascular disease. So if you reduce the sodium intake, salt and other sodium intake from your food, uh, you know, and drinks, of course, then uh, you're better for your heart health. That is what the new study says. 15th, matching female university students with female advisors increases retention and GPA. Very interesting, right? Uh, so allocating the female students with the female faculty and male with male. So to increase the GPA, very interesting. 16th story, meat consumption is associated with better mental well-being. That is what the meta-analysis says. 17th, new study reveals association between fires in the US, the wild fire, the forest fires in the US with climate change. Again, alarming, you know. 18th story, mRNA vaccine against Lyme disease developed in the Guinea pigs. So Lyme disease, as you know, it's very common for hikers and people who, who enjoy, uh, you know, outdoor lifestyle. The problem with uh, uh, this uh, uh, hiking is, you know, you might get tick bites. And once you get this tick, uh, you know, so the tick has got this bacteria called Borrelia burgdorferi. And that causes this debilitating disease called Lyme disease, which is very hard to treat. And the disease is something like arthritis, the bone pain, and also neurological ramifications. You know, you will be kind of, uh, yeah, I mean, your quality of life will be highly uh, impaired if you get this disease, Lyme disease. Until now, we really didn't have any treatment. And now that because of the cues from COVID-19 vaccine, a Moderna mRNA vaccine, a uh, similar tactic has been developed for uh, Lyme disease vaccination, mRNA vaccine. So I think it's very good uh, for all people who love outdoor lifestyle, including myself. I love hiking, you know, in the, in the mountain and forest tracks and trails. So I think it's very good to get the shot before going on those areas where Lyme disease is prevalent. You know, 19th story. There appears to be an optimal bedtime. BBC reports, very interesting between 10 p.m. and 11 p.m. So if you go back between 10 p.m. and 11 p.m., uh, it's linked to better heart health. So that is a very large number study, uh, analyzed 88,000 volunteers. You know, so that's very interesting, 10 p.m. and 11 p.m. Not too early, not too late. Uh, usually I go a little bit early, 9 p.m. And But yeah, so this is very interesting. This is what the science says. 20th story. Five hours a week of moderate intensity physical activity could potentially prevent more than 46,000 cancer cases in the United States each year. So this is really important. Five hours of uh, exercise for the cancer prevention. Exciting, isn't it? Now coming to the general observances, uh, which is, uh, you know, we are, we are looking forward to in the month of uh, uh, December. First of the December is World AIDS Day. Today is World AIDS Day. Second tomorrow is National Pollution Prevention Day. Pollution is very common, especially when, when I whenever I hear this pollution, first thing comes to my mind is air pollution. We should really fight air pollution, friends. Almost two lakh infants are being killed every single year because of this air pollution. So it's really important to prevent this air pollution. And uh, second, why this, it's, it's in December 2nd, this National Pollution Prevention Day here in India? Because of the, uh, you know, Popal gas strategy, tra uh, tragedy because of the, you know, uh, methyl isocyanate, isn't it? That happened on 2nd of October. So though it is an industrial accident, uh, 2nd of December is uh, celebrated as or observed as National Pollution Prevention Day. 3rd December, Persons with Disabilities Day. 4th. 
Ah, uh, fifth. Fifth is soil day. Okay, so soil day. Fifth is soil day. Seventh is civil aviation day. Ninth, anti-genocide day as well as anti-corruption day. Remember the story of corruption which we discussed uh, today about the sedentary, uh, not sedentary, the, the obese politician linking Nobel Prize, isn't it? So it's on 9th, anti-corruption day and anti-genocide day. 10th is again that is related, human rights day. World human rights day is on 10th. 11th is all those people who love mountains. I love mountains. World mountain day. That's on 11th of December. 12th is Neutrality Day. So neutrality is one of the philosophical concepts which we dwelled on this channel early on. And uh, you know this particular Neutrality Day of the UN is for the spirit of international, uh, you, know, uh, 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 you know, aligned or international relationships. You know, not being part of any major uh, blocks. You know, something like uh, early on India was part of something called non-aligned movement. Right, NAM during the Cold War, uh, we are aligning neither with the USSR nor with uh, USA. Right, so that kind of spirit of neutrality that is what this one. And also on 12th is a Universal Health Coverage Day. Uh, it's I, I think it's very important observation. 18th is World Migrants Day. You know, migrant workers like me, I'm from down south to, to the north of India. Well, still, I'm an Indian. That is a spirit, isn't it? But there are many migrant workers, migrant in the sense, international mi migrants. Many Indians go to countries like Japan or, uh, you know, uh, uh, Europe or the, the, the Americas, isn't it, for, for working. So all these are the migrants, isn't it? So ultimately, uh, it's like migratory birds, right? We human being itself is from, uh, migrated from, uh, you know, the west of Africa, isn't it? <clears throat> 27th is very important day, Epidemic Preparedness Day. I think that is uh, further underlined by ongoing COVID-19 epidemic, you know. So, Epidemic Preparedness Day, that is on 27th. Uh, coming to the astronomy observance, as usual, all these observances are binocular events. You don't need to have a telescope. If you have simple binocular, you can watch every event, providing that you are living in a, uh, you know, clear skies where the sky is blue, you know, so not polluted areas. If you have air pollution, you cannot see much of these events, you know. Uh, if you're lucky that, and also, of course, light pollution is a big thing. If you're living in metros, chances are high that uh, most of the uh, minor events you will be missing out. And I suggest, as usual, sky view. Uh, it's a fantastic free Android app that let you see all these things. So if you don't know where to look, for example, second uh, tomorrow is a uh, Fionisid meteor shower. If you are uh, clueless where to look for, you can simply put Fionisid in uh, sky view. It will ask you to point to one location where you can see it, you know, if you're lucky, right? And fourth is total solar eclipse. Friends, this is visible only in south, southern hemisphere, especially in real south, like in south of uh, South America, like um, Chile or Argentina, and in South Africa and Namibia, yes, that country we we saw that in earlier earlier as well in this show, isn't it? And also the entire Antarctica. If you are, happen to be in Antarctica, then you can see it, you know. So this uh, total solar eclipse. And by the way, every solar eclipse happens on New Moon Day. So fourth is a New Moon Day, and every lunar eclipse happens on Full Moon Day, isn't it? So, sixth is Phi Cassiopeid meteor shower, you know. So, seventh is Moon Venus conjunction. So, very interesting. Seventh is Moon Venus, eighth is Moon Saturn, and ninth is Moon Jupiter. So, three conjunctions are uh, all together, isn't it? Seven, eight, and nine. So, conjunction means it's very close by, so that in one click of a photo, in one frame, both of these objects will come in. And also on seventh, Puppet Willid, very interesting, right? Fancy meteor shower, you know, Puppet Willid meteor shower. And on 9th, there is another meteor shower called Monocerotid meteor shower. 12th, Alpha Hybrid meteor shower. 14th, Geminid meteor shower. Look, so many meteor showers. So if you are interested to see that meteors, you know, so this is the right month for you, December, right? And 15th is NGC 1981. So uh, NGC is basically it's a it's a, a stellar cluster, 
uh, if you look the Orion, the sword part of the Orion, uh, you know, near the Orion Nebula, the constellation Orion, you can see this NGC uh, 1981 in uh, on 15th of December. 16th is Komae Berenised uh, meteor shower near Leo constellation. You can you can watch Leo. You can spot it, and then you can see this meteor shower somewhere near the Leo. You can see the meteors uh, emanating from it. On 19th is uh, Leonis Minored meteor shower. Uh, you know, Leonis Minored, very interesting name, right? And also, this is uh, that is also in, on the Leo constellation Leo. You know, so on 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 nineteenth, and also nineteenth is the cold moon, the full moon of uh, December is known as the cold moon because of uh, you know it's winter, isn't it? And coming on twenty first December, I'm looking forward to it. It's a solstice day, friends. December solstice. That is the shortest day in here in the northern hemisphere or the longest day in the south, southern hemisphere, no? Because sun is right there, isn't it? 23.5 degrees towards south, uh, you know? So the south, southward journey's end point, isn't it? And it's also midwinter day, you know? the uh, Though it's like midwinter we call, but for astronomers, this is the first day of the winter, you know? Yeah. And 22nd is Ursid meteor shower. 28th, NGC 2232. You can see this uh, stellar cluster in Monoceros constellation. And again on 29th, next day in Monoceros, you can, you can see yet another, uh, you know, stellar body. It is NGC 2234. The earlier one is 2232. All these things you can see through a small uh, binocular, provided that you are living in, a, 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 you know, no polluted places. Right? And especially if you are lucky to be somewhere in Himalayas or in... Uh, Western cuts, you can see all these things very nicely. And also I'm looking forward to another one of the event that is in December 18, that is uh, uh, NASA is launching one of its satellite with one of the key instrument uh, for, especially for astronomers and all, uh, all of the rest of us who love astronomy, isn't it? It's called James Webb Telescope, the, the uh, uh, predecessor to the NASA's Hubble Space Telescope. But uh, of late, I came across, I think we have already covered in uh, in this channel, especially in the, one of the earlier episodes of the Curiosity about the James Webb Mixed Legacy. You know, there are so many complaints and, uh, uh, you know, race, racial, uh, you know, discriminatory, uh, you know, the claims against uh, James Webb. So uh, NASA was at one point of time, they were rethinking to name uh, this, uh, you know, telescope from Webb, James Webb to something else, but still it, it kept on. Uh, by the way, James Webb has nothing to do with the science. He was a, a military officer in, uh, in the U.S. Air Force, you know. And also, I also came to know that this particular telescope, uh, though it is very expensive, it's not going to last that long, only five years, max 10 years. Uh, which is in stark contrast with Hubble. Hubble was like decades, right? Almost three to four decades. So that spirit we really needed. You know, use and throw kind of system like the smartphones. Uh, any smartphone that you buy these days doesn't even come with a re removable battery, right? So where is right to repair, friends? This use and throw attitude, somehow I don't like it. So somehow we should change. NASA should really rethink about uh, this kind of a James Webb telescope, but still I'm looking forward to it because of the, the telescope by uh, itself is highly powerful and it could potentially reveal very, uh, you know, very interesting facets of uh, uh, the celestial world around us. And I'm also looking forward to uh, the, the launch. Uh, the Indian Space Research Organization is planning to launch Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle, PSLV and SSLV. Uh, you know, that will launch the RISAT 1A. So that is basically our own radar earth observation satellite system that is from the Satish Thawan Space Center in Sri Harikota in, uh, in Andhra Pradesh uh, near Nellore, isn't it? Near uh, Tirupati. I, I saw that place, you know, so that is uh, near, uh, uh, near a, an inlet, uh, you know, the lake body. Uh, yes, so Pulikart, Pulikart Lake is very near to that uh, Satish Thawan. So uh, though the ISRO hasn't confirmed the date, uh, it is also scheduled to be held in uh, December, so I'm looking forward to it. Opportunities for the month of December. We have several opportunities, friends, including Hong Kong PhD Fellowship. If you are an MSc student, you may apply for it. A British Ecological Society grants. If you are an ecology researcher, you can apply for this grant, uh, which is tenable across the world. 
Vienna Bio Center Summer School open for all students across the world. Please apply. Check it out. All these links are in the show notes of this video. And also IAC Ram and Postdoc Fellowship. So if you are interested to do the postdoctoral fellowship after your PhD, you may please apply for this Ram and Postdoc at IAC Bangalore. TWAS UNESCO Associate Program, which is very good for uh, young researchers around the world. The World Academy of Sciences is one of the most prestigious science academies in the world. And CERB CRG, that is Core Research Grant, a Women Excellence Award is also there. Core Research Grant Core is also open. By the way, I am a winner of this Core Research, very prestigious grant from DST CERB, right? Science Engineering Research Board. So please check it out and do apply if you're eligible for this prestigious grant here in India. And now we have the Young Academy of Sciences, uh, you know, Young Academy of India's uh, Facebook page, uh, you know, where we put a lot of these kind of opportunities as well as the science related news. And please check it out. Exciting curiosity, uh, you know, curiosity driven research news. So check out our thing and do subscribe to our channel as well as our you know our uh, facebook page and the link is again in the show notes of this particular uh, video right and uh, i also uh, in the last month i also was uh, uh, privileged to be part of a bbc podcast uh, presented by the story works so in collaboration with international science council i'm a member of the Inter international science council a prestigious organization in paris so uh, in the podcast i spoke about the communication so how to communicate the science uh, during this new normal period of post COVID-19. So I, I did speak about communicating in uh, religion, regional language and also, you know, so, uh, yes, yeah, so uh, on the misinformation and disinformation, you know, so check it out. I, again, I, I put this in the show notes uh, to the BBC podcast series where I was part of. So that's all for this episode, the December episode of Curiosity. I hope you like it. Uh, this episode please do share in your relevant groups and do like uh, you know this this uh, uh, this video and um, yes so i i see you soon in uh, 2021 roundup so i will make one episode that actually covers i will pick up the stories featured in the curiosity for the last 12 months of 2021 and uh, i will make a one video of uh, uh, what moved sciences in 2021 one episode so i will see you soon in that episode and also uh yeah i wish you a productive december the last month of 2021 you know and uh, i will see you again in 2022 in january episode of the curiosity until then uh, please take care of yourself and if you can someone else too goodbye <laughs>